In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. We welcome our visitors this evening. Uh, one I know is from Alabama, so we welcome you. No banjo on your knee. This is the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and as is our tradition here at St. Michael, we take a moment to set aside all the distractions we carried in here with us and turn to God who loves us and is willing to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, you came that we might have new life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you suffered and died for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, glory to God in the highest, and honor, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. For your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God, almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth. Peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand the right hand of the father have mercy on us Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the most high Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass 
in such a way as to hold fast, even now, to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I'm, I am presuming to speak to my Lord? Though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still, Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted. Please, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, for the sake of those 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us, he also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asked for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asked for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ask, knock, seek. We live in an age of great communication. There are modes of communication available to us now 
that were unimaginable just a few years ago. But with all these modes of communication comes an increase in attempts at communication. And I say attempts because many of them are unsuccessful. Do you have an email? Well, then you know what it's like to struggle with spam. Is your phone equipped with an answering machine? Well, then you know that some of the messages you play back are unwanted messages. They may even be recorded announcements, recorded again by your recorder. I mean, how many extended warranties on our car do we need? The mailman may bring you something worthwhile, but I'll bet it's badly outnumbered by bills and junk mail. The number of commercial messages on television just seems to keep increasing every year. And then there are times when you are the one who wishes to communicate. You send the email, but get no response. You leave the phone message and it gets lost. Or the person you're trying to contact's in a meeting away from their desk or on the other line right now. For all these reasons and still others, it looks sometimes as though human communication is a contradiction in terms. But wait, there is something else regrettable about all this that I have to mention. Often, we go a step further in a very unrewarding direction. We assume that communication with God, what religious traditions call prayer, is necessarily beset with the same problems that make so much human communication a disappointment. Perhaps we imagine God as this busy executive who comes back from his lunch break and sees all these while you were out, pink slips covering his desk. And one of them, he notices, has your name on it. There's a callback. He crumples it up in file 13. Today's scripture readings tell us stories in an effort to help us realize that commun communication with God is not like that at all. Or if it is, the responsibility rests not with God, but, hey, with us. Jesus tells a story about a neighbor that I will call the midnight nuisance. Remember that back then, nobody had email. They didn't even know what a cell phone was. Well, they didn't even have electricity. So when it got dark, most people went to bed because it got dark. Moreover, when people made bread, they made enough for that day. When Jesus mentions our daily bread in the prayer that he teaches his disciples, he means daily, and they know what he means. So what happens when some guest arrives at your doorstep late in the day, and you feel this sacred obligation to practice hospitality, but the bread you baked this morning is gone? Well, you might go over to your neighbor's house, you know, that one for all, all for one sort of thing. On the other hand, however, maybe this neighbor's already in bed. They have several small children. Those children have finally fallen asleep. They don't want to get up and wake the children when the knock comes on the door. Will they answer? Well, Jesus says they will. They do this out of a sense of duty, perhaps, maybe also just to get you to go away. Perhaps they see that sometime the roles could possibly be reversed and they would need help. They might even like just to be helpful. In any case, they put into your hands the bread they have left, enough to feed your guest. And you tell them thanks, and then you return home through the darkness of night. Jesus offers this story to give us hope. If people will get out of bed in a situation like that, ordinary, tired people whose children might be light sleepers, then don't you think that Almighty God, 
whose mercy endures forever, don't you think that the Lord may at least be that approachable to those who pray? Don't you think that those who search out his house through the darkness and who knock on his door in their need, don't you think that they will have the door open for them and have thrust into their hands more than a few breadcrumbs? You see, God is a lot better than we are, even at our best, or God isn't God. And Jesus realizes how anything this gracious is really difficult for our small minds and our tough hearts to accept. And so he makes the point again in different terms. He recognizes that most parents at least try to be good parents, even if they sometimes fail. If our children ask for a fish fillet, we don't throw a live snake on the plate. If our kids ask for a hard-boiled egg as a snack, I don't know whose kids would do something like that, but if they did, we don't give them a scorpion, do we? No. When it comes to our kids, we don't act like jerks. Why should we suppose that when it comes to his kids, God would act that way? The Lord of heaven and earth does not crumple up and throw away the while you were out slip. No, far from it. Might be easier if God did, then we might regard ourselves as kind of off the hook regarding prayer. We try to make it complicated. God makes it simple. We want it our way. Well, God has a better way. We may be out to lunch, but God's waiting right there by the phone. Jesus ends tonight's gospel with an attack on tunnel vision. Often, what we ask of God is too small. We ask for what might be a part of our lives rather than life itself. Jesus promises that the Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. I mean, what bigger gift could we ask for? What bigger gift can be given? God bestows His Spirit for those who ask. And in the light of that Holy Spirit, well, everything starts to look different. It's astounding to realize that God gives Himself away in response to our prayers. It's really astounding to realize that God then expects a like generosity from us. Ask, seek, knock. May our receiving and our giving be abundant. Amen. And now let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, this through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus encouraged his followers to ask, seek, and knock. Trusting in God's goodness, let us offer our prayers this day. For the Pilgrim Church on earth, may God help us to readily forgive others and joyfully seek his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected officials and policymakers, may God grant them integrity in protecting all who are vulnerable, especially the poor, the elderly, and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. For those trapped in sin or addiction, may God give them faith and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. For our family of faith, may the Lord's faithfulness help us continue in prayer, trusting God to answer in His time. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died trusting God's mercy, especially Joe Joyce, for whom this Mass is celebrated. May he reward them with everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who will be celebrating birthdays or anniversaries this week, let us pray to the Lord. And for all of our parishioners who are sick or suffering in any way, that God will send out his healing spirit to them and watch over those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord And for all those who have asked for our prayers, those we have promised to pray for this evening, and those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And now we pause to add our own intentions in silence. And for all these prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you provide generously for your children. Please hear and answer our prayers this day in your wisdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Brother, Mr. of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life 
and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you have made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray together in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And may God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 And still we celebrate the body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Make sure you take a bulletin home with you. There's some stuff in there about altar servers. We have sign-up sheets on the display case. We're going to start altar servers back up in September when the kids go back to school. So we've got to have some training. It's been so long. I need training myself. It's been so long since we've done that. Uh, but please sign up. Uh, any child that has received their first Holy Communion is eligible to be an altar server. And also the August ministry schedules are out there on the display case as well. So ministers, please take one of those. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.